Hi guys and welcome to our PowerPoint, or in this case Kino, animation tutorial. I'm going to show you how to create stop motion animation using simple images that you find online and Keynote or PowerPoint. Once we've built our frames, we will export them into iMovie or you can also use Movie Maker if you have PC and create the images. That part is actually very easy and very quick. The time consuming part is building the slides. So what we'll do is we'll start with a bunch of slides that'll look something like this. And we'll turn it into this. Okay, so let's get started. I'm using Keynote because I have a Mac, but you can also use PowerPoint. It's the exact same process. The first thing you're going to want to do before you even start your presentation is you want to decide what your animation topic is going to be. As you saw, my animation was the cow getting abducted by the aliens. So I went online and I found these images. I found a cow, I found a farm background, and a UFO. For your animated images, you're going to want to choose images that are PNG files, if you can find them. PNG files means that there's no background information. So if you find an image and it's got these little squares, odds are it's a PNG file. If it's not a PNG file, or you can't find the PNG file image that you want, you already know Photoshop. So you could take this image and very easily cut out this simple shape in Photoshop and save it as a PNG file and now you have the image that you want. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we are going to open our presentation. So I'm just going to open, okay, I like to get rid of these things, they bug me. And then insert your background slide. Now you only have to do this once, so choose your image and I've got it in this file. So that's my image. You may need to resize it. The next thing you want to do is to insert your images that you're going to animate as you need them. But before you do that, you want to duplicate this layer and we'll be duplicating these layers again and again and again. The animation that you saw at the beginning of this video had about 140 different frames. So you can see how it's going to be time consuming. To duplicate this frame, you simply go to Command D. And we're going to start with our cow walking into frame. So let's insert our cow. Here he is. He's too big, so I am going to resize him and I'm going to put him just slightly off frame because he's going to walk into frame. So this will be our second frame. Command D again. Now we highlight our image and using the arrow keys, I nudged them 20 spaces each time. Duplicate and just keep repeating this process. Now, at this point, you can already just start scrolling back up through your images and you can start to get an idea of what your animation is going to look like. And then just keep on going. And make sure that you remember to highlight your frame first because that's what you're duplicating. Now you can decide when you want the other object to come in. On my original video, I had the cow almost center to the frame before the video came in. I'm going to change that this time and I'm going to start bringing the UFO in sooner. So I'm going to insert, choose my image, grab my UFO, and here you can see this is not a PNG file. So I'm going to have to quickly make an edit. So I'm gonna delete this, I'm gonna throw it into Photoshop, and then I am going to insert my PNG as opposed to the JPEG. And we want the PNG, we want the transparent background. And drop it. We don't want to start out large like this because we want it to feel like this spaceship is flying toward us. So a really neat little trick is to simply start it out small. The smaller it is, the further away that it appears to be. So now we can pop this guy right up here. And now the cow 
and the UFO are both in frame. So our previous frame had the cow slightly out of frame. Now the cow's moving forward and you can see the UFO up here has also entered the frame. We have two objects to pay attention to. So this is going to get a little bit tricky. So again, this is why it's so time consuming. You have to pay attention to the details. And I'm gonna make the UFO a little bit bigger as it flies into frame. And then I'm also going to move it into frame. Duplicate your layer and then just keep moving these things. Make them a little bit bigger. And he's getting a little bit closer. And again, every once in a while, go back and cycle through your frames just to get a sense of what your animation is looking like. Another thing you can do is sort of make your spaceship look like it's also moving kind of vertically as well as horizontally. So you can put your cursor on the bottom corner and holding down the command button on your Mac, or I think it's control on your PC, that little double arrow will be curved and now you can pivot your UFO a little bit and change its location. So now the ship has kind of swooped in so I've nudged it over to the right, but I'm not going to nudge it down any further. So now it's kind of swooped in and it's going to level off. I am going to make it a little bit bigger though still. And then we want to sort of center the cow and center this ship above him. I still want the ship a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna make it larger, but it doesn't have too much further to go. And then we'll put some expressions on the cow's face. Let's see how this is looking. So far, so good. Maybe our cow is about to realize something's not quite right. So let's give him some big eyes. So it's really simple. We're going to insert an oval. We'll fill it white. We'll give it a border, a line, and that's black. We'll make it about two and let's bring it down. Make sure you hold shift. If you don't hold shift, you'll lose your dimensions. So hold down shift and then drag the corner down and make it small, whatever size you like. All right. and we'll drag it onto his eyeball. Now we want to make another one of those, so I'm just going to hit Command D, and I'll bring the other eyeball over here. You can nudge it into place wherever you want it. And he needs pupils, so we're going to do this again. We'll just Command D, we'll make it smaller still, and we'll fill this time black. Command D, and we will take our time and put it here. And there's our surprised cow. So let's make our cow look up. Click one pupil, and then holding down shift, click the other one, and then you can nudge them up. Now we can have our cow look back at us again, highlight both, nudge them back down. Let's make them blink a little bit. So we'll remove the pupils, just highlight them and delete them. We're going to add a line. And this is really easy. You just add a little line like that, command D, now we'll hold that blink about two for two frames, and then we want him to open his eyes again. And then he's gonna blink a second time. Okay, so let's go back to here. Now our ship is not moving at this point. We're only looking at his eyes moving. So we're gonna Command D. We've just doubled this frame, but we're gonna drag this frame down to the bottom. So his eyes are open, he blinks. Eyes are open, we'll do that again. Then we'll grab these two blinking frames, click one frame, hold down shift, grab another one, command C, and going down to the bottom, command V. Eyes open, blink, blink, eyes open, blink, blink. Oh, we only copied one for some reason. Okay, that's fine. We'll command D again. Okay, so let's look at our animation so far. When he looks up, I feel like this should be a little bit longer, this looking up. So let's duplicate that twice. Now that'll hold that for three frames. The next thing we need to do is add the beam that is going to come out of the ship to abduct our cow. So we're going to add a shape, just like we did for the eyeballs. We're going to go to insert shape, and this time we'll choose a triangle. Let's change our color 
So we'll fill, maybe we'll change it to this yellow. And then we'll change our opacity, we'll slide that down to about 35%. Now this triangle is going to come from somewhere underneath the UFO. So we'll just position it. But now of course it's in front of the UFO, but that's fine. We're going to highlight the UFO. Then we'll go over to the Arrange tab and we will click Front. And that brings the UFO to the front. Now we click the triangle and we just start dragging it out little bit by little bit. Don't forget, duplicate the frame first. Then we'll drag out. Try to keep it centered so it doesn't wobble around too much. And we just keep doing that until our beam is all the way down. So again, we'll get a sense of what this looks like. Now in my original, I also had his eyeballs wobbling around. This takes a long time, but it's really just a matter of choosing the little circles and then moving them incrementally at the same time. I'm not going to do it for this demonstration. Uh, it would just take too long, but you can really do anything if you're willing to take the time. Now, we have to make the cow fly upwards, but we can't do that because our beam is now in the way. If we try to click on the cow, it'll only highlight this triangle. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut out the triangle and then we'll paste it back in a little bit later on. It does take a little bit of time going back, but that's the only way we can really do it. So we're going to hold down Command and X, and that has now cut out that shape, beginning with this frame, number 59, for our animation. And we want to make the cow start flying upwards. We can make him smaller as well. It's exactly the same process that we've been doing. But there's one other problem too. If we start making the cow go upwards, his eyeballs don't go with him. So we have to highlight everything. All four of those little circles and the cow. Now, right click and click group. Now you've pasted, basically pasted the eyeballs to the cow. It's all one image, so now it will all move together. Okay, so let's start bringing the cow up. We'll go about 10 at a time. We also need to start making our cow a little bit smaller because he's not going to fit. So the other thing that we will do is just very slowly start making him just a little bit smaller. Now you're going to want to keep him in the approximately the same position. So you'll have to kind of match it up to the previous uh, frame. If your cow is going over your UFO instead of under, you simply click on the UFO and click front. And now our cow is gone. You can actually delete him. You don't need him anymore. So let's have a look at our abduction so far. Right. In comes our cow. Now we have to put our beam back. So let's go find the frame where we cut out our beam. Okay, so starting with this one, Command V will put it back. Now you notice that the beam is now in front of the UFO, so click the UFO and bring the UFO to front. And then this is where it gets a little bit repetitive. You just have to do that for every single one of these frames where the beam was missing. So now our cow is gone, our beam is there. Now we're going to reverse the process with the beam and bring it up. Let's make it a little more interesting this time. Let's turn the beam into a pillar before we move it upwards. So let's just make it more narrow. And at any point, you can start making it shorter as well. I'm not going to bring it in anymore. I'm just going to bring it up. 
So you can see we are approaching 100 frames, and this is not quite 30 seconds long. Now it's gone, we can delete, and let's have a look at our animation so far. And now, same as before, we just simply make our ship smaller and we push it out of frame. And I'm going to make it make a little hard turn here as well. See, now I accidentally moved the background. If that happens, Command Z to undo. And that's it, that's our animation, about 131 frames. Let's watch it from the beginning. And it's not quite 30 seconds long. So now that we've done all of our animation, we want to export all of these images. So what we have to do is go to File, Export to, and images and if you're using powerpoint it will be something very simple file export to and then it'll it'll be images or maybe it might say jpeg you want them as jpegs so images okay all these are here it's jpeg next and we'll put them in the exact same folder okay so we'll call this cow abduction and then we simply click export and now what it's doing is it's changing every single one of these frames that we created in PowerPoint or Kino, and it's turning them into individual images. So close that down. Now here's our file, cow abduction. And these are all of our images, one after the other, each one the next frame. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to open in iMovie. So the first thing we want is to open iMovie. You can also use Movie Maker, create a new project, and we simply want to drag our images and drop them right down here in the timeline, okay? So find your file, animation images. These are my images. Click the first one and then Command or Control A, that'll highlight all of them, and just drag it down right here. And you can see it's dragged all of those images. Close it up. And these are all your images in your timeline now. So now they're in iMovie, so if we hit play, so you'll see a few things that we have to fix first. The first thing we notice is this. It's zooming in and out and each one lasts for, it looks like about four seconds. And that's way too long. So let's make some adjustments. The first thing we don't want that zoom in and out. So making sure that all of them are highlighted and you'll know they're highlighted because it's yellow. So even if you just click one and then Command or Control A, now they're all highlighted. You go up here in iMovie to crop and fit. Okay, so now if you start, you'll notice that now it's not zooming in and out for any of these frames. But you can see down here, it's still each image is taking four seconds. So Command A, make sure everything is highlighted. And then we go up here to the I, the little clip information, click I. And over here it says duration. And here we can see it's actually four seconds. So we're going to change that to the lowest possible setting, which is 0.1. So now you can see our time changed. Now let's click play and see what happens. So that's it, it's very time consuming. The animating part itself is very, very simple, but each one of those incremental frames is what takes the most time. So good luck, have fun with it, and if you have questions, of course, always ask.